You sure you want to out yourself like this? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> Six months ago, we made a podcast where we basically went over Gamefly. We talked about its features. At that time, neither of us had ever used it. We just kind of talked about it to find out if we thought the service was worth it. Well, since then, um, I've been using Gamefly. I basically did that, use that podcast to convince myself to use mm-hmm. the service. Yeah, uh, it was we a have actually self-servient podcast. We have both been using Gamefly. Um, I've been using it this entire time. I think you used it for just over the summer. Yeah, I used it for a while and uh, and ended up canceling. Actually, I tried to cancel the first time, and they did like the the classic thing where they're like, "Well, uh, we'll give you this for free," and I was like, "No, I'm leaving." And they were like, "Well, fine, we'll give you this for free," and they gave me like a month of like the Mac Daddy subscription. Yeah, and I was like, "Fine, whatever," and. Um, I then just canceled it because I, I just, I have too many games in the backlog and I wasn't using it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was just like this pressure in my mind to like make sure I didn't keep a game too long or, right. you know, it, yeah. so it just wasn't, it wasn't working out for my current place in this world. Right. But uh, that doesn't mean I wouldn't use it if I didn't have such a backlog. Right. Well, I, and my experience was significantly different than yours. I've been basically using Gamefly as my main way to get games for these past six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought today we could look over the service, kind of talk about my experience and your experience with what, you know, what we've had this past six months and what it's been like. And is it worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, I've kind of been using this as an experiment. So, um, and it was also kind of a replacement for like those, um, those subscription services for you. Like you canceled your game pass and all mm -hmm. that for us. Yep. Cancel Game Pass and decided and the to go, same thing. Decide to go this way as instead. Um, so, what is the experience like? You know, what is it like to use GameFly? First thing that you should know if you're interested in this is that it is done through the mail, the snail mail. Yes, done through the U.S. mail system, and uh, I'll tell you it. Uh, postal service. The postal service. That's what it's called. The postal service is a band. Yeah, it is. But. <laughs> but um, so there is some like th- things that happen because it's through the mail. You know, you have to wait on games. It's not like you can get it right that moment. It's not like buying a digital game. You have to wait a couple days mm-hmm. to get it shipped to you. You do. And then uh, you have to ship it back. And yeah. then, so there is some downtime in that. So it is done through the mail. You have to like, interact with your mailbox. Like, so yeah. keep that in mind. Like, so, you know. That little flag on the side. Got to raise that bad boy. Yeah. And you work with a queue system. So you like, you <clears throat> queue up games that you want to play and they typically send you whatever game is at the top of your queue if they can. If it's mm-hmm. not available, they send you the second one and then they just kind of move down the list. Mm-hmm. I will say that in general, my experience has been that they almost always send you the very first game on the top of your queue. Yeah. I always got the game on the top of my queue. And before you, we move on, I did, you know something I realized during this time with Gamefly? Okay. My mailbox doesn't have a flag on it. It doesn't? I never knew that because I've never used it. Oh, no. What did uh, you do? Did you have to buy a flag? No, I just put it in there, and the next day it was gone, uh-huh. and they just took it anyway. Well. Which is crazy if you think about it, because, like, what if you, like, like, because sometimes I'll forget to check my mail for a day, and it'll go, like, two days, you know? They don't, like, take the mail back out and send it back. No. But when they came back and saw this, like, little game fly envelope, they took it. Like, well, they, it also wasn't addressed to you. It was addressed to Gamefly, True. so they would have seen that. But I don't think they take the stuff out of your mailbox every time and like s- raffle through it to check the address. Anyway, I was impressed yeah. with their like problem solving skills. But they also <laughs> might have like just gotten used to picking up Gamefly envelopes from your mailbox, right? So when they saw one in mine, they were like, "Oh, I know what this is." I wondered if that's what it was. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I, I, it worked every time, and I thought that was cool. Yeah, but in general, they almost have always sent you the one that's at the top of your queue. For sure. Now. In the app, they give you kind of an availability of the game. So they tell you if it's high availability, low availability, or it's not available at all. So you can kind of know, like you can expect, if it says high availability, it's pretty much guaranteed that you are going to get the first game on your queue. Mm -hmm. If it says low, you might get it. And if it's not available, you're not going to get it. So you can kind of Hmm. cater your queue to figure that out. So it definitely works pretty well. Yeah. Um, Now... What about day one releases? What about day one releases? Did you uh, you didn't try any day one re- releases with GameFly, did you? Mm-mm, I did not. I've tried a couple, and uh, in general, there is a thing like they usually send them to you. There is a thing called Game Lock, and uh, 
with the current subscription I have, I can lock one game at a time. And that's like, a, you know, day one releases that you're guaranteed to get it, mm-hmm. uh, at least within... Unless the mail screws you over yeah. or something. But they try to get it to you on day one. It's like they're at least guaranteed going to ship you the game. And it seems like they ship it a couple days before it actually releases so that it can get to you by the actual release day. I wonder if anybody's ever gotten a game early because of that. Like, I, I wonder if the mail's ever been like super efficient. And I kind of thought I was going to get a game early one time because they shipped it. Mm-hmm. Like so many days in advance, I was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna get this like a day before it actually." That would have been awesome. But no, it came on the release day. Yeah. So I am. I'm sure that I bet that that has happened. Yeah. You know, say you live close to like where they ship it out right. to, and it's like they ship it out early. I, I bet that. Yeah. The 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 USPS can probably pull that off. Now, if GameFly was using, oh, I don't know, FedEx, <laughs> that wouldn't happen ever. You wouldn't ever get a game ever. Mm. Sorry, I'm yeah. not sour. So I'm going to skip ahead in this outline we have here and move down to would this work as your only method or way to access games? Yeah, it looks like you've broken down some of your statistics here. Yeah. So uh, You sure you want to out yourself like this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> so in the past six months with Gamefly, this is just my real numbers. I looked today, looked at my rental history and figured out how many games I did rent through the service of six months of use. And... Uh, in that time, I was able to rent 28 games. Rent 28 in six months. Now, uh, that means it's about 4.6 games a month or about one a week. So about one game a week I averaged, mm-hmm. which is about what you kind of would expect. You get a game, you play it, and then you ship it off and you get a new one. I'd say that that's pretty good. I think yeah, I really... Those I think, are not rookie numbers, man. No. And um, I was paying $16 a month for the service, which means that I averaged about... $3.42 per game. That's what it cost me to play these games. Um, now, my costs are actually a bit more than that because you have the option to keep games. Mm-hmm. And out of those 28 games that I rented, I kept four of them. What'd you keep? I kept... Uh, Splatoon, Live Alive, I know. Live Alive, Splatoon 3. Mm. Um, let me think, what else? Oh, Near Automata. Mm-hmm. And then one more. Um, I don't remember what it was, but... I, I kept, kept one game. I kept four games, yeah. So in that time, I kept four. So those, and I think that my keep prices, they varied just depending on the game. So I definitely yeah. spent more than that. But if I had just rented and I'd sent all of them back, I would have only spent $3.42 a game, which I think is really good. That's really good. Yeah. That's really obviously good. way cheaper than if I had purchased 28 games. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, like, it, a lot of these games were new releases. So, I mean, it would have, this would have been multi hundreds of dollars, you know, that I would have spent. and. Yeah. Right. And could you do something like this with like Game Pass? Yes. But you had access to like essentially anything you want. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't bound to the library of Game yeah. Pass. I basically had any game, mm-hmm. which is like so much better because you're talking about Game Pass. I mean, you has, even got like 3DS games and things. Oh yeah, like I played all kinds of games. 3DS games, PlayStation games, Switch games, mm-hmm. um, Xbox games. Really, I played a lot of Wii U games. Yep. And uh you know, I wasn't bound to the Game Pass library. I really, Game Pass has a, you know, what, 300 something games. Yeah. Whereas on Gamefly, there's thousands of games. Right. You know, so many more games. So I like, I like it better for that reason, you know, because I don't have to be like, oh, if the game's there, I can play it. No, I can play whatever game I want through Gamefly. Mm-hmm. So would this work as your only method to access games? I say yes, absolutely. In fact, I think it is the best value. I think it's even better value than Game Pass. It, does it require more work? Yes. Is it as convenient as Game Pass? No. But if you're willing to work with the mail system and you know wait a few days and manage your queue, mm-hmm. it's by far, I think, the best way to game on a budget. And it's not that hard to throw a, throw a game back in. No, and it's, and it's not hard robots. at all. But it is less convenient mm-hmm. than just pressing download and getting that instant gratification. It is. You know, you have to plan. You have to think about what games you're playing, what games you have coming up. You got to constantly be organizing your queue. But that's kind of fun if you're nerdy. Yeah, you for know? me, I I liked yeah. it. I'm always getting like sometimes during the day if I just get bored, I'll pull up. <coughs> let Daniel cough. I'll pull up my GameFly app and I'll just organize my queue and think like, what game do I want to play next? Or like, eh, I don't really want to play that one as much anymore. Let me move this one in its place. Mm-hmm. It's fun. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I really liked Game Pass for just those those times when I wasn't sure I'd really like the game. Like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Oh, you're saying Gamefly? Yeah, sorry, Gamefly. Gamefly. Yeah. I mean, just in short, I mean, I, I know I didn't stick with it, but 
I really think it's great for that. If it's a game you think you're going to love, maybe just buy it. But, yeah, you know, something something you're on the fence about, it was awesome for that. Yeah. I would say that, like, uh, my overall takeaway from it so far has been that, like, um, if you want to use it and, like, be a, a power user, you know, I don't think it's the best for uh, people who are going to play games that they know they're going to like mm-hmm. uh, if you are a collector like me. Because if I'm getting a game that I know I'm going to like or I'm pretty dang positive I'm going to like, I don't like getting it through Gamefly because I'm going to end up just wanting to keep it. Mm -hmm. And then I've wasted my like rental period and that time on a game that maybe, you know, I wish I'd got a game that I wasn't so sure about. The way if I didn't like it, I could send it back. Yes. You know, or maybe I would find that I did love it. But games that you know you're going to like, I would recommend maybe not using Gamefly for that if you're a collector. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about collecting a game, still Gamefly is awesome for it. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, But also, another thing I found out is that Gamefly is best for shorter games because... I could agree with that. As you're, you know, because you're on a rental period. So you kind of like want to game the system and get as many games as possible. Right. You can't get that $3.42 a game. If they're all hundred hour RPGs, right? You're just not your your cost is going to go way up at that point. I mean, it's not going. It's still going to probably be cheaper than buying the game, but shorter games are like where it's at. Mm-hmm. You know, not not all games are short. You know, but still, it's right. something to think about. I wouldn't say prioritize short games, but maybe prioritize short games. Yeah, I think that's that's a good. I think that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. So, well, so now kind of to finish it off here, Daniel. Do you think that in the future you will ever use Gamefly again? Or do you think you've tried it and you think it's cool, but it's just not for you? I think if I get through my my massive backlog, um, well, see, I don't know. It's hard to say because the whole, the the light at the end of the tunnel for me working through my backlog is because I want to buy a Steam Deck. Yeah. And Gamefly ain't going to help me with a Steam Deck. Nope. So I I think there could be a, you know, a time in the little more distant future when maybe I do get back to a place where I want to use Gamefly. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could definitely see it. I mean, I definitely see the utility in it. Uh, I just have too many games that I can already play right now. Right. You know, if I get to a point where I don't, then yeah. Yeah, and I, was, I will say that has been um, something that I've struggled with using Gamefly is that I've struggled trying to balance playing games from my backlog and mm-hmm. trying to play games from Gamefly because games in my backlog are just sitting there. Yep. Uh, whereas Gamefly stuff, I actively pay a subscription for it. Right. And it makes me feel like I want to prioritize Gamefly games, mm-hmm. but then I, I leave out my backlog games and it's just like... Well, that was the problem with me. Yeah. It was, it, yeah. It was like, there's always that anxiety in my mind, like, well, I have to be using Gamefly or I'm wasting my money. Yeah. Um, so that's why I had to just pull the plug on it. Right, yeah, and uh, but I think that's, I think that makes sense that you like juggle these subscriptions because if you just pay for all of them all the time, right, you're not getting yeah. your money's worth. No, and uh, so, you know, I found that I haven't played as many games from my backlog as mm-hmm. I would have probably had. Yeah, but that being said, I don't have that many games in my backlog, and I enjoy playing games that, uh, you know, that I'm unsure about. I like using GameFly for that service. To find out maybe I'll love it or maybe I'll hate it. Either way, you know, it's a good affordable way to try games that you're just on the fence about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I like it for that reason. I think I will certainly continue to use it. I have no plans to cancel it.